and found the commercial quantities here. And that's what you have to establish first. Originally, it was just presumed to be incidents of iron ore existing. This is good news. This is um, something that we can all be happy about. Because if, as a result of their work, uh, they had come to the conclusion of this, this talk about iron ore in the rest is not even commercial quantities. It means we have come to the end of it. But having established that it's in commercial quantities, it means we are in business now. We can now proceed to, as they are doing, establish the volumes and the real quantities. And thereafter, we can exploit the iron ore resource and eventually be able to build here in Ghana an integrated steel industry. In the quiet, rolling hills of Ghana's Oti region, a discovery has been made that's making a lot of noise. It's a discovery that rumbles with the force of a thousand factories and carries the weight of a nation's future. We're not talking about more gold or another oil field. We're talking about something more fundamental, something that could literally be the bedrock of a new industrialized Ghana. Vast, high-grade deposits of iron ore have been confirmed, stretching across five different districts. This isn't just a mineral find. It's a potential economic revolution. It could rewrite Ghana's story, transforming it from a nation that just exports raw commodities into a manufacturing powerhouse that builds its own cities, infrastructure, and destiny with its own steel. But let's be real. Africa's history is filled with stories of resource discoveries that turned into curses. Stories of immense wealth that only fueled corruption, deepened inequality, and left people with polluted land and broken promises. So here's the billion dollar question. Is this massive iron ore discovery Ghana's golden ticket to prosperity? Or will it become just another tragic chapter in that same old story? The stakes couldn't be higher. Let's break it down. To really get what's happening, we need to go to the Oti region, a relatively new region in Ghana. It's here, in communities like Jaimarum within the Kajibi district, that the earth has given up a massive secret. But the discovery isn't just in one spot. Significant iron ore deposits have also been confirmed in the Guan, Biakoi, Jasakan, and Krachi East districts. This isn't a small find, it's a regional treasure map. The effort has been led by a key state agency, the Ghana Integrated Iron and Steel Development Corporation, GISTEC, working with their technical partners, the Africa Exploration and Minerals Group. Since 2020, they've gone from speculation to hard evidence. Geologists have been meticulously mapping the area, tracing a massive 8-kilometer-long belt of ironstone. Imagine an underground spine of industrial potential, about 30 meters wide on average, and the best part. A lot of this ore is visible right at the surface, which could make getting it out of the ground cheaper and easier. But seeing it on the surface is just the start. To know what's really down there, you have to drill. A huge drilling program kicked off in mid-2024 to figure out the depth, quality, and true volume of the ore. The initial results of that drilling are what everyone, the government, investors, and the people of Ghana, is waiting for, with the final, official resource estimate expected around September 2025. Africa Exploration and Minerals Group's chief geologist has already said the drilling is hitting the iron formations just as they predicted. And in the middle of all this, they got a bonus prize. Alongside the iron, they stumbled on something else, serpentinate rocks, which to a geologist, often point to nickel. And sure enough, preliminary drill samples are showing what could be mineable concentrations of nickel, though they're still waiting on the final lab results for confirmation. This find in the OT region isn't just a data point. It's a sleeping giant that's finally waking up. A mineral discovery is only as good as its quality and scale. You need all that can compete globally and justify the huge investment it takes to build an industry from scratch. This is where the OT region discovery goes from promising to potentially world-class. Let's talk grade. In mining, grade is everything. The early results from the OT region are just stunning. Some of the surface material has shown iron oxide concentrations up to 82%, 
which means about 57% pure iron. The average samples are hitting around 47% iron. These aren't just good numbers, they're exceptional. Gistic officials say if these grades hold up, the OT deposits could be higher quality than some currently being mined elsewhere in Africa. In a competitive market, that's a massive advantage. To make sure this wasn't just wishful thinking, over 100 samples were sent to independent labs at the internationally recognized Intertech Laboratory and the University of Ghana. Both confirmed the high iron content, adding serious credibility and sparking a wave of investor interest. Now, let's zoom out. This OT discovery adds a huge high-quality piece to a puzzle Ghana has been assembling for years. The nation already has other major iron ore deposits, like the massive 1.3 billion ton Shini deposit and the smaller, but richer, Opon Mansi deposit. Add it all up, and Ghana is sitting on an estimated 1.7 billion tons of iron ore before we even get the final count from OT. The OT find, with its mix of size and incredible quality, could be the key that unlocks the value of all the country's iron reserves. The OT regional minister, Joshua Makubu, didn't mince words, saying what's been found in his region will transform Ghana. He even half-jokingly told people in the capital to start looking for land in OT, expecting an economic boom. This isn't just local hype. The CEO of Gistec has confirmed that serious investors are already knocking on their door. But he's smartly preaching patience, wanting to get all the data right before signing any deals. It's a careful approach that's critical to getting Ghana the best deal possible. So why all the excitement? You have to understand what iron ore really is. It's not just another rock. It's the essential ingredient for building the modern world. When you hear iron ore, think steel. Over 98% of all iron ore mined becomes steel, and steel is the skeleton of our civilization. The device you're watching this on, the building you're in, the car you drive, the bridges you cross, it all depends on steel. A nation that can't make its own steel has to import the building blocks of its own development. That's exactly where Ghana has been. Every year, the country spends around 900 million US dollars importing iron and steel. That's nearly a billion dollars leaving the country every year just to buy a product whose main ingredient is buried right under their feet. The discovery in OT presents a historic chance to flip that equation completely. The vision Ghana's leaders are laying out isn't just to dig this stuff up and ship it away. That's the old model that kept African nations poor. The new vision is about value addition. The goal is to start producing steel in Ghana by 2027. This is a huge shift in economic strategy. It's a declaration of intent to capture the entire value chain. Instead of shipping red dirt overseas, they plan to forge gleaming steel beams at home. This doesn't just save that $900 million a year. It creates a powerful engine for a new self-reliant economy. A domestic steel industry means Ghanaian construction companies can buy local and government projects can be built with Ghanaian steel. It would create countless other industries making everything from car parts to appliances. It's not just the discovery of a mineral. It's the discovery of a future where Ghana doesn't just buy its progress, but builds it. A discovery like this puts a nation at a crossroads. One path leads to prosperity and economic freedom. The other path leads to the resource curse, the paradox that has seen so many resource-rich nations end up with more corruption and poverty, not less. Ghana is standing right at that fork in the road. First, let's walk down the sunny path. The numbers being thrown around are mind-boggling. Some analysts believe a fully developed iron and steel industry could tack on an extra 5% to Ghana's GDP, generate a billion dollars a year in government revenue, and create around 20,000 direct and indirect jobs. That's not just jobs for miners. It's a cascade of employment for truck drivers, railway workers, steel workers, and all the people who will provide services to this new workforce. This is how you build a middle class. This ambition would also force an infrastructure boom, 
You can't move billions of tons of ore without modern railways, which Ghana currently lacks. Building them would create even more jobs and connect the country. Steel making also needs a ton of power, pushing an expansion of the national grid that would benefit everyone. This vision even goes beyond Ghana's borders. With a booming steel industry, Ghana could become a key supplier for all of West Africa. We're already seeing the first steps, a massive $600 million mining operation at the Shini deposit is slated to start in late 2025. A clear signal that this isn't just talk. It's a future forged in steel. Now we have to look down that other darker path. It's littered with cautionary tales. The resource curse happens when a sudden flood of resource money distorts an economy and creates a giant pot of cash that attracts corruption. When a government makes its money from digging stuff out of the ground instead of from a productive population, it can stop listening to its citizens. Ghana doesn't have to look far for warnings, it can look at its own past. The country has produced gold for centuries and oil for years. Yet, despite billions in revenue, poverty and inequality are still major problems. There's a widespread feeling that the money from past booms never really reached the average person. The dangers are clear. Without ironclad transparency, this new wealth could be siphoned off by a small elite. Another huge risk is failing to add value locally. The easy path is to let foreign companies dig and ship the raw ore away. Ghana would get some mining jobs, but miss out on the real wealth created by making steel. It would be a repeat of the colonial model. Then there's the environmental and social cost. Open pit mining can wreck the environment, polluting rivers and destroying farmland. Ghana already struggles with the damage from illegal Gallum Say gold mining. Preventing a similar disaster with iron will take serious political will. This is the precipice where Ghana stands. One side is industrial strength. The other is a story that has played out too many times before. Knowing the two parts exist is the first step to choosing the right one. The question isn't about resources. It's about strategy, institutions, and the political will to see it through. Breaking the resource curse isn't luck. It's deliberate, smart governance. At the center of it all is the Ghana Integrated Iron and Steel Development Corporation, or GISTEC. Created by law in 2019, its entire purpose is to avoid the mistakes of the past and develop an industry that benefits Ghanaians. GISTEC is the guardian of the nation's interest holding at least a 30% stake in any new project and pushing for local participation. The success or failure of this whole thing might just rest on its shoulders. The core of their strategy is a laser focus on value addition. The government has said time and again, the plan is to build steel mills, not just export ore. It's harder and more expensive, but it's the only way to genuine development. To pull this off, Transparency is non-negotiable. Contracts must be public, revenues must be tracked, and citizens need to see where the money is going. Many are calling for a sovereign wealth fund to save and invest revenues for future generations. There's also a push to do this the right way by attracting green capital and proving the mining can be done with minimal environmental damage and maximum benefit to local communities. And of course, None of it happens without the infrastructure. The dream of a steel industry is just a dream without the railways to move the ore and the power plants to run the mills. Investment in this enabling infrastructure has to be a top priority. Finally, the plan focuses on local content, making sure Ghanaian companies get a piece of the action and that Ghanaians are trained for the high-skilled jobs. Breaking the curse requires a plan that covers all the bases. A strong state institution, an obsession with local value, radical transparency, and massive investment in infrastructure and people. The path is clear, but it won't be easy. The discovery of high-grade iron ore in the OT region has handed Ghana a key. A key to a future of industrialization, diversification, and self-reliance. The vision is powerful, to transform Ghana from a nation that imports its building blocks into one that forges them. The projections of boosting GDP, 
creating billions in revenue, and adding thousands of jobs paint a picture of a nation transformed. The plan to build an integrated industry, from mine to finished steel, is ambitious, bold, and absolutely the right one. However, the shadow of the resource curse is long. Africa's history and Ghana's own past with gold and oil are sober warnings that resource wealth doesn't automatically create national prosperity. The fight against corruption, the challenge of building infrastructure, the need to protect the environment, and the absolute imperative to ensure the benefits flow to all Ghanaians will be the defining struggles of the next decade. This is more than an economic story. The discovery of the iron ore wasn't the victory. It was merely the firing of the starting pistol. The real race, the race to build a just and prosperous future from it, has only just begun. The choices made now will forge Ghana's destiny for the next hundred years. The world is watching to see if they can turn this red earth into a golden age. If you found this breakdown of Ghana's discovery fascinating and want to keep up with the big economic shifts shaping our world, make sure to like, subscribe, and share this with someone who needs to know what's at stake. And drop a comment below. Do you think this will be a blessing or a curse for Ghana?